Hello and welcome to the Auntie Lisa Show. What should we do a story about today? Well, I've already picked it up. We've got us, T, Stephen, Uncle Stephen, Auntie Susie and Willow, the dog, Drew, a lion, an octopod, or the octopod I should say, Sky and an ice rink. Easy. <coughs> One day. One day, Aunt Lisa, Alexander and Christopher and Uncle Stevie Bum and Susie and Willow all decided to go for a fun day trip to an ice rink. Now, you might well be thinking, a dog and an ice rink? Are you crazy, Auntie Lisa? And well, you'd be right, because usually dogs aren't allowed to go on ice rinks, but Willow is a very special dog. And what you might not realise is that Willow is actually a champion at dog ice skating. Who knew, hey? Who knew there even was a championship of dog ice skating? I didn't know until today. So, we everybody went to the ice rink all together. And it was a superb day. The end. I'm joking. It was a superb day though. Uncle Stevie Bum was not good at ice skating and Fee fell on his bottom about six times. Auntie Lisa laughed a lot and so did Susie and everybody else. And Susie, it turns out, is quite the ice skating pro. She was doing loop-de-loops and spins and gliding around like this. Christopher and Alexander were just doing super cool racing as going as fast as they could all around the ice rink. And Auntie Lisa was going around the ice rink whilst holding on to one of those models, you know, like a penguin or something to steady her so she didn't fall on her bottom. And Willow, Willow was doing cool ice rink assault courses, which is like you see dogs do on the television where they jump over things and go through hoops and through tunnels but actually on ice, which makes it a whole lot harder. So, everything was going super duper duper duper, duper fabulous. <clears throat> and they bumped into their good friend Sky. And Sky was like, wow, I didn't know that there was so much fun to be had at the ice rink. And everyone said, what, how did you not know Sky? She said, well, I've actually always been a little bit scared of the ice rink. And Auntie Lisa said, why? What's wrong with the ice rink, Sky? And she said, well, I know it's silly, but I always thought that it was a really, really big, deep swimming pool of ice. And that what if you fell through and went under the ice and got trapped? And Auntie Lisa said, gosh, Sky, I used to think that too. But it turns out it's just a thin layer of ice and you can't fall through it and get trapped. And Sky said, I know that now. How silly. So she said, I'd really like to try ice skating. Do you think you guys could show me? And Auntie Lisa said, well, we can do one better than that. You're a dog. Willow's a dog. Let's let Willow teach you. <sighs> it was a match made in heaven. Willow taught Sky all the best dog ice skating moves, like running and jumping through hoops. Sky was a very quick learner. Everything was going superbly, and everybody was having the best time. But as so often happens, something went drastically wrong. Oh no! And I'll tell you what that was after the break. I'm joking, there's no commercials in these shows. <clears throat> there should be though, I'd make loads of money, yeah? Anyway, so 
here's what happened. Everybody was chilling out next to the ice rink because they're a bit tired. So they would sat down for a nice cup of tea to warm themselves up. And they also at ice rinks, you can usually get chips as well. So they were having some chips. And I was talking about how brilliant ice skating was when all of a sudden they heard a horrifying sound and it went like this and everyone went what was that <clears throat> horrifying noise And Willow went, because <gasps> she is a super smart dog that can smell really well. And Sky went, <gasps> and they both started sniffing the air. <gasps> and all the hair all over their bodies stood on end. They were like, <clears throat> they like they'd had an electric shock. <clears throat> hair everywhere. And Aunt Lisa said, this has got to be bad. Then they realised what the dogs had realised first. Something had arrived at the ice rink that was not normally an ice rink guest. It was a lion. A big, big, ginormous lion with a great big hairy mane really super hairy lion and it did not look happy at all and everyone went what where has the lion come from why is it at the ice rink what's going on <sighs> wow sky as we know has contacts obviously with the paw patrol so she called the Paw Patrol. Something's gone crazy in my hair here. It's starting to look, wait, I could do an impression of a lion. Wait. It looked like this. Ta-da! Pretty good lion mane, I feel. Maybe I need a haircut. Hmm. Okay, anyway. So, I might have to take that off again. Whew. So, Guy called up Chase on the pup pad and she said, Chase, Chase, there's a lion, there's a, li a lion at the ice rink. And Chase went, oh my gosh, that is terrible. A lion at the ice rink? Where did he come from? And Sky went, I don't know, but he looks hungry and I don't speak lion. I don't think Willow speaks lion either, and I know the rest of these guys don't. And we were just having a cup of tea, and he's ruined it. I think he might want to eat us all. And Chase said, don't worry, Sky. Chase is on the case. So Chase called up the rest of the Paw Patrol. He called up that rider, him, who's in charge, even though he's about 12. He called up Ryder, and Ryder said, oh my gosh. Poor Sky, what if he gets got she sorry gets gobbled up? This is a nightmare. So they all started doing their best to sort out the problem. <clears throat> but they were quite a long way away. And that lion was getting closer and closer. People were gonna have to think fast if they were not gonna get gobbled up today. So the lion was like this. <laughs> And everyone was like, eee! And they all sat perfectly still, which is the best response. And then they realised that only works on T Rexes. And actually, does it? Nobody knows. Anyway, so the lion was crawling towards them. <laughs> And it's on and Christophe went, Auntie Lisa, he looks hungry. And Auntie Lisa said, quick, you go out there. No, she didn't do that. She didn't do that. You're crazy. She said, get behind me. 
He gobbled me up before he gets to you. Superhero, auntie. That's right. Uh, his aunt and Christopher said, No, oh, we've got an idea, auntie. We've got an idea, auntie Lisa. We know how to solve this problem. And Aunt Lisa said, what? what? We've only got chips. Lions don't eat chips. And Alexander and Christopher said, silly, Aunt Lisa. We never leave home without some sausages. And Aunt Lisa said, you've had sausages in your backpacks this whole time. Ooh. And Alexander and Christopher said, it's not gross. It's fine. And Aunt Lisa said, oh, I disagree. It's disgusting, but fine. If it gets us out of this situation, crack on. Alexander and Christopher rummaged in their backpacks and they both found some sausages at the bottom of their backpacks. Aunt Lisa said, oh, jeez. Anyway, and then Aunt Lisa said, quick, throw them as far as you can away from us. And Alexander went, hooray! And Christopher went, hooray! And the sausages went, and landed in the middle of the ice rink. And the lion went, Mm. Nom, 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 nom. And he promptly fell over. <laughs> and his legs were like. And he was still trying to eat the sausages. But he was laying out flat on the ice. He tried to get up. And then he went. And fell back down. He tried to scrabble his way up. And everyone went, oh, I feel kind of sorry for that lion now. But at least he's not trying to eat us. This is a good start, everybody. The problem we've got is what do we do with the lion now? Sky said, well, the Paw Patrol are on their way, so hopefully they'll be able to help. I wonder if there's anyone around here who might be able to help even sooner. And they looked around and they went, hold on a minute. Isn't that guy hiding behind that table, Drew? And Auntie Lisa said, I'm sure that's Drew. She went, Drew, Drew, Drew. And Drew went, oh, oh, hi, I, I was just sitting here behind this table for no reason at all. I always sit behind tables. And Alexander and Christopher said, were you hiding from the lion, Drew? And he said, yes, I was hiding from the lion. You were hiding from the lion too, right? It was scary. It still is scary. It's still on the middle of the ice rink, right? It's not... Okay, it's still in the middle of the ice rink. The, the lion was like... <laughs> Dill couldn't get up. Poor little thing was going to... Well, not so little. I was going to get a horrible frostbite. Aunt Elisa explained this to Drew. And Drew said, hmm. I wonder if we can catch that lion and put it in a cage somewhere. And then we've got to figure out where it's come from. Oh, man. This is complicated. So, Drew had a little thing. And he said, oh, I've got a net blaster. I'll go and get it. It's in the back of the car. Well, that was a result. So, Drew scooted off. Not scooted, just ran off to his car. And came back with a super cool net blaster. Which was like, Ooh, really heavy. And he went, okay, ready? <coughs> he said, Alexander and Christopher, I've got to hold it. And you've got to press the firing button, okay? And then the net should shoot out and catch the lion. And they said, okay, on three. One, two, three. <coughs> he had forgotten that the net blaster is normally attached to some large object like a car. And they all three of them went flying backwards as the net went flying forwards and completely missed the lion. And everyone went, oh man, that net has completely missed the lion. That didn't work. Well, 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 they still had a big problem. Poor lion was by now, although not so hungry, very grumpy because he was stuck on the ice. And he'd start trying to lick the ice like this. And you know what had happened when you lick ice sometimes? His tongue got stuck. He was a very unhappy lion indeed. In fact, he was so unhappy, he started making little sad noises like... Ah! 
which means in lion, get me off of here, I don't like it anymore. She could probably guess. So, this was becoming an animal emergency. <clears throat> so they needed the Paw Patrol to get here quick smart. Luckily, they were on the case, as Chase had already said. So, the Paw Patrol came charging into the ice rink, like, hey, we're here to rescue and save the day. And Aunt Lise went, oh, thank goodness you're here, Paw Patrol. The lion's over there. And they went, whoa, that is one big, big, ginormous, enormous lion. Gosh, how on earth are we going to do that? Hmm. And then Rubble said, well, we could use the winch on the back of my special truck thingy. And Chase said, yes, good idea, Rubble. And um, one of the other ones, his name I've forgotten, said, I also have, we could build, wait, there's that one that has all the recycling stuff. His name I can't remember. <clears throat> I think he has a green hat. Oh, that's going to kill me. Right. Anyway, he said, what if, Rocky, his name's Rocky, I think. Anyway, he said, we could build a lion cage and then Rubble can use the winch hook on the back of his drivey car thing and it'll hook the cage and tow it off of the ice rink and then we can take it outside and Sky can hook it underneath her helicopter and we'll fly it back to wherever it's come from. It was a fantastic plan. Apart from the lion couldn't get up and they couldn't get it in the cage so they needed another aspect to the plan and I said how are we going to get that poor lion into the cage meanwhile they're all building a cage and Alexander Christophe said what if we make a ramp into the cage that could work so Alexander and Christopher made a wooden ramp like a bridge into the cage Meanwhile, Rocky and everybody and Rubble and people like that, they were making the cage. Auntie Lisa was helping too because she was very handy with a hammer and a saw. And Stephen and Susie had forgotten they were in the story. Um, that they, they were also helping. <clears throat> Willow, Willow was staying well out of the way because she's not silly and she's a dog. And she doesn't have opposable thumbs because she's a normal dog, unlike the Paw Patrol. So she was actually sitting down, secretly eating leftover sausages that she found in the bottom of Alexander and Christopher's backpacks. Now, finally, the cage was built. They'd used up loads of wood from all around the place that they had found, like bits of wood from old benches that were next to the ice rink that nobody was using anymore. <clears throat> they built a big wooden box. And then Alexander and Christopher's job was to slide out their special wooden ramp towards the cage. Like this, ready, ready, pew. And they slid the little bridge that they'd made that goes into the cage. And the lion went, ah. He was still stuck to the floor. They'd forgotten to get him off the floor. Oh, what were they going to do now? And then Auntie Lisa had an idea. She said, we just need to melt the ice around his tongue. And then you'll be able to get it off the floor and crawl into the cage. So, she did the biggest sacrifice that any auntie has ever had to make. She had to pour a little bit of her tea away. It was a very painful moment, but she did it. She crept out onto the ice. And just next to the lion, she tipped out some of her tea. And the tea poured onto the ice and it melted the ice. And the lion went, ah, ah, ah. Mm. And he looked up at Aunt Elisa with a look on his face that said, thank you. Because he still felt really sorry for himself. And Aunt Elisa said, that's okay, Mr. Lion. And she skated back away. And then the lion gradually pulled himself up into the cage because he was fed up with lying lying the lion was fed up with lying lying on the ice because it was really cold he didn't like it 
So he climbed inside the wooden cage using the ramp that Alexander and Christopher had created for him. And then um, Stephen and Susie quickly shut the door of the cage and locked it. <sighs> At that point, Rubble attached his special winch hook and he towed the cage, because ice, you can slide it, towed the cage off of the ice rink and then popped it on some wheels and towed it all the way outside to where Skye was waiting with her helicopter. Now all they needed to do was figure out where on earth the lion had come from. It occurred to them they hadn't figured that part out yet. So they had a big problem. They had a big lion who'd had a really bad day. They didn't know where to take him. But luckily they had a phone call. And that phone call was from the octopod. And now you think, wouldn't you, that um, the people on the octopod probably won't have seen what's going on. But you see, they had. And Captain Barnacles called up from the octopod and he said, Hello, Alexander, Alexander and Christopher, are you there? And they said, Ahoy there. Yes, we're here. What's going on? And he said, well, we saw the strangest thing. A boat went past us earlier. And do you know what was on it? Alexander and Christophe said, a lion. And Captain Barnacle said, what? How on earth did you figure that out? Alexander and Christophe said, yeah, it's a lucky hunch. It was a lucky hunch. Uh, any idea where the boat came from, Captain Barnacles? And he said... Well, on the side of the boat, it said, it said, it said, actually, um, Lego City Zoo. And Anthony said, aha, it must be that the boat was on its way to Lego City Zoo. But then maybe something went wrong and it got marooned and the lion got off somehow. So all we've got to do is make our way back to wherever that Lego City Zoo boat has been marooned. Gosh, there might be all sorts of animals all marooned on there. and Maybe only the lion had got out. God, let's hope it's only the lion that got out. What if all the rhinos are running riot in the town? Oh my goodness, it doesn't bear thinking about. So, they called up their friend, Drill, who works on... by the sea, as, you know, the sea rescue person. And Drill said, I will take a look. And he went and took a look, and sure enough, marooned on a nearby beach was the zoo boat. He said, oh my God. There's hundreds of animals on here, but they're all in cages, but they don't look happy. Something must have gone really badly wrong. So he called up the zoo and the zoo said, yeah, we were expecting a delivery of all of these animals, but they never made it. We thought perhaps something had gone wrong, but we couldn't get in touch with the captain of the boat. We don't know where he is. <sighs> it's all getting a little bit stressful at this point. So, Sky took the lion to Lego City Zoo. That was job number one. It went, bye Sky, bye lion. And she zoomed off in her helicopter and safely delivered the lion. Meanwhile, everyone else raced down to the beach where they found the Lego City Zoo boat. But where were the humans who were supposed to be driving the boat? Nobody could see them anywhere. Everyone went, oh man, I hope something bad didn't happen to the humans that were supposed to be driving the boat. Where's the captain of the boat? So, as luck would have it, Stephen and Susie had recently qualified to drive boats. So Stephen and Susie and Willow set off with the rest of the animals 
and they drove them all the way round to the Lego City Zoo docks where they safely unloaded a very grumpy bunch of animals that needed a nice sit down and a long drink because they were very thirsty. But that's what they did and they really enjoyed actually driving the boat round there. Anyway, meanwhile, Alexander, Christopher, Aunt Lisa and Drew set about finding the captain of the boat and the people that were supposed to be in charge of it because they were missing. And they went with Drill on his rescue boat and they started dr driving it up and down the seafront. Not the seafront, you know, the sea. Up and down, up and down. They were looking. Where are these poor people? Maybe they had to jump out of the boat for some reason. Eventually, they saw something. Alexander and Christopher had their gold binoculars. <laughs> no. <gasps> And eventually, they found the crew of the ship, the boat that had been marooned. And they were swimming around in the sea, wearing their life jackets. And they said, oh my God, I didn't think anyone was ever going to find us. I didn't think anyone was ever going to find us. And they said, quick, get aboard, get aboard. And Alexander and Christopher helped pull them in. And Auntie Lisa made them a hot cup of tea. And they said, what happened? What happened? And do you know what had happened? Well, it turns out that while they were sailing the boat round, they had come across a terrifying ghost ship. And on that terrifying ghost ship, there was a terrifying ghost pirate dog. And the ghost pirate dog had terrified the lion so much that the lion had gone crazy inside his wooden crate. And he'd gone... <laughs> and he'd smashed it to smithereens. And then he'd started charging up and down, up and down the ship. And the people on the boat thought they were going to get eaten. So the only thing they could do was leap into the sea and hope for the best. <sighs> Alexander Christophe said, oh, I bet that was Captain Blackpool. The most terrifying dog pirate of the seven seas. We'll have to let JB know. He is really out of order this time. We're going to have to do something about him. But that's a job for another day. Let's get you guys home and get you more cups of tea and a sit down. And they said, OK, that sounds like a plan. So, Drill drove, sailed, drove them all home to the nearest dock. And he made everyone a nice cup of tea or hot chocolate or a drink of their choice. And they all relaxed for a little while before they all went home to bed. And that is the end of the story. <laughs> night, night. Love you. <laughs>